told you that understanding female bodies could help everyone live healthier longer? <laughs> it's true, it's true, it's true. So I'm here today to challenge what you think you know about women's health and also explain why this is important for every single person on the planet. Now, it's clear that female bodies and male bodies are different. You don't need to be a scientist or a doctor to understand that. You can see it with your eyes. Um, but those differences extend deeper, down to the cellular level, down to the molecular level. And we know a lot more about male bodies than we do about female bodies. In fact, I think about female bodies as a, a puzzle that really needs to be solved. I'm a neuroscientist by training. Um, my lab studies mind-body communication, and so we think a lot about how the brain and the rest of the body talk to each other and how that changes with age, how that communication might get disrupted. Now, if you think about your body as like a busy city, then your brain is the control center. It's constantly communicating with your different organs and integrating all that information, and that's how your physiology gets set up and also regulated. Now, that communication can happen through wired signals, so things like electrical signals traveling through nerves that really look a lot like telephone cables or fiber optic wire. Um, but your brain also has a wireless communication system, a network of chemicals that travel back and forth in both directions that essentially, I call it the brain's Wi-Fi. <laughs> but it really is like that. So, it, you know, your brain is not acting like a dictator. It's constantly listening to and integrating feedback from all those places. And so there's this beautiful, complex symphony that's going on all the time that's really dictating what happens in your body. And we think that changes in that communication really lead to systemic aging. Now, um, as a woman, as a scientist, I really thought that I understood how my body works, and I was wrong. I missed a lot of information. I knew that women live longer than men on average, but what I did not know is that if you're lucky enough to live to old age and you are female, then you are going to have a shorter health span than males. What that means is that you're going to spend more of your life in poor health. American women spend an average of 12 and a half years at the end of their lives suffering from disability and disease. So think about that for a second. Like, let that just sink in. Women have shorter health spans than males at baseline. I, that doesn't sound like fun to me. Uh, <laughs> So why is that? That was something that I really didn't understand. Um, it turns out it's because we have these organs, ovaries, that are aging faster than the rest of the tissue in the female body. So ovaries age at about two and a half times the rate of the rest of the organs in my body. And that sets up this differential health span. Now, ovaries are for more than baby making. They're not just egg factories. They're actually endocrine organs, which means that they're producing dozens, if not hundreds, of hormones, not just two, that are signaling to almost every tissue in a woman's body, much like the brain, kind of like a second brain. They have their own Wi-Fi network, and ovaries communicate with bone, with heart, with liver, with muscle, with skin. I could go on and on. And what this communication network is doing is it's promoting health. They're like the architects of health in female bodies, and they are also the conductors for aging. And so when ovaries age faster, it essentially sets up this disparity. And, you know, when I think about ovaries, most of the time when I say ovary to someone, they think fertility or they think menopause. And those are certainly two things that ovaries are important for, but that's not all that they do. So as we're moving forward and thinking about human health, um, we really need to understand what's driving ovarian aging if we want to think about extending health span in females. The reason that we are where we are is because lots of things, actually. Persistent societal taboos, uh, dramatic underfunding for biomedical research on women's bodies, and incredibly systemic bias in biomedical research. So before 1993, most clinical studies didn't include women. Uh, and it wasn't until 2016 that in the US, the NIH mandated that both males and females, animals, needed to be included in studies. And this rule is actually about to get rolled back. 
<laughs> so we can't afford to go backwards. <laughs> we're, we're pretty far behind. You know, we're not years behind or decades behind. We are generations behind understanding how female bodies work, and this has dramatic impact. You can't know what you don't study. For women, it has a dramatic and profound impact around their health. So, you know, female bodies are different. Um, all sorts of things are set up differently, and so things like heart attacks that present differently in women because we use the male symptoms as the baseline. Anesthesia, which was calibrated on male bodies, often has really dramatic impacts on female bodies that we didn't anticipate. Medicines work different in female bodies. <laughs> Until recently, uh, most of the drugs that were pulled from the market by the FDA were pulled because of adverse effects in women, because they were never tested in female bodies. So the cost of not knowing is profound. Between 2008 and 2023, there were 623 new drugs approved by FDA. And of those, a really a laughably small portion were devoted to female-specific conditions. And if you remove cancer drugs from this list, less than 4% of the drugs that were approved by the FDA in the last 16 years were for female-specific conditions. We have to do better. The drug pipeline for females is empty. We need to devote more, more time, more energy, more research dollars to female health. There's also an economic cost, and there's a cost beyond just adverse effects in women. You know, if we understood why female immune systems were better at fighting viruses, which they are, we could have saved a lot of male lives during COVID. There's so many things like that where understanding sex differences would actually give us the ability to treat disease in both sexes. Now, <laughs> the answer is actually really right in front of us. There's an incredible economic case for doing this. Um, the Women's Health Access Matters report shows that $350 million, every time you invest $350 million into women's health research, it generates $14 billion for the economy. Okay, that's a 40x return on investment. I think that's better than most markets. I mean, if you know of a better one, please let me know. Um, I, I, I'm available after this. And it goes beyond that, right? The investment case is huge. We're 51% of the population. We control 80% of the healthcare dollars. There is literally no reason not to make this go forward. And yet, only 10% of the NIH budget was devoted to women's health, from conception through death, and that number is likely to go down. Only 4% of R&D funding was devoted towards women's health. We have to change this. We have to change this. We can do better. I mean, I'm here to demand that we do better. <laughs> um, <laughs> female bodies have been understudied and ignored for centuries. And it's to the detriment of all of us. The discoveries that could transform medicine for everyone are just there waiting. You can't solve half a puzzle and expect to see the whole picture. We need to focus on understanding female bodies. Now, today is International Women's Day, as you all know. Yeah. Um, when I was invited to give this talk last year, I never would have thought that I would be standing here telling you that we're moving backwards, but we are. And the hard-won progress that we've made over the last many years is being eroded at an incredibly alarming pace. When science is politicized, when words or ideas are censored, when research funding becomes a political weapon instead of a public good, we all lose. And so I'm here to ask for your help as a scientist, as a woman, and as someone who believes that knowledge saves lives, we absolutely have to protect science. I would ask that everyone think about investing in understanding all bodies and choosing knowledge over ignorance, because women's health is human health. Thank you. <laughs>